in today's video no good deed goes unpunished. Me and Kenny put our skills to the test to bring new life to Grandma's back patio. <laughs> Originally, we were here just to coat the concrete with epoxy flakes until we noticed this. You guessed it, rot, rot, and more rot. This 25-year-old deck is in shambles. And come to find out, Grandma hasn't used it in years because she's afraid she's going to fall through. Well, not on our watch. So with a little help, a bunch of laughs, and a whole lot of DIY, we're going to completely revamp this outdoor space. And the best part is she doesn't know she's getting it all for free. I don't know what to say. So stick around. You might learn a thing or two on how to save some money and remodel like a DIY pro. Oh, dude. <laughs> Will we be in? Will we be in? <laughs> Guys, we're on site on a project. I am Mitch with Stone Coat Epoxy. Kenny with RK3 Design. And we've got a cool project on our hands. We've got a little concrete patio, a stem wall, and a rotted wood deck. What are we gonna do with this? So what we're gonna do first is rip this thing out and get rid of this hazard because as you can see in multiple places, the deck's just rotten. And yep. the homeowner, she is an elderly lady. Yep. And we're gonna take care of her and give her a new deck. Yeah, Little she did she know. She didn't know that. No. Now, she talked to Kenny and I about doing her flake patio. She's got grandkids. The first thing that caught my eye was the rotten deck. When yes, I saw that. I right said, away. Forget about this patio. I don't want grandma or grandkids falling through this deck. Right. So you're going to rip this out. We're yep. going to bring in fresh new wood, build a brand new railing. Yep. And then while you're ripping this out, I'm going to go in and hit this concrete patio. It's in great shape. It is. Zero cracks. Zero cracks. So no crack chasing. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That is a win for us. starting off the day on the right foot. So I'm going to go to Home Depot. I'll rent a seven inch grinder. It's $30 for the entire day. Perfect. Can't beat that deal. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll grab the dust shroud so it's not a dusty mess. Uh, we'll both get to work and then meet in the middle and go pick up some materials. All righty. All right. Let's, let's go to work. This looks like it's been painted and then an overlay over it. Well, it's like they put something on it. It's like an overlay for more grip for grandma or something. Right. It's like they just textured the, the paint. Yeah. It's odd because you, I see spots where the gray is underneath. Right. So we're going to have to peel all this up because this is flaky a little. You know what I mean? There's all sorts of stuff going on here. So we want to get down to raw concrete. We might see cracks. Maybe that's why the paint. Yeah, because that, that is a good call. I've, I've exposed cracks as, as I've ground. Yeah. The cream covers it and then right below. So that, that occasionally you'll need to do a little patch. But the flake hides little stuff like that. If a, yeah. If a playing card won't fit in it, you're not seeing it. Right. Whenever you're working with concrete dust, eyes, ears, and masks do not breathe concrete dust. We have it hooked up to a vacuum, so it should be minimal, but it's also loud as heck, so be sure to wear that ear protection. Look at this thing, bro. Have you seen this? I have shimmied around on my hands and knees far too many times. I've graduated. Uh, a guy my size should not be on your hands and knees crawling around all day. That little, it's about 150 bucks from Amazon. If you're doing this for a living, that's a pro tip. Get that cart, you will not regret it. You're gonna be able to do more of these floors throughout the week instead of having to take a couple days off to recover. So let's go to work. What's that called? A lightsaber. I don't know. I don't know. It's made for like flooring installers, but saving my butt. Man, I love this thing. Making quick work of it. They're a little Ooh. rusty. They are a little rusty. Well, like they say, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna see how many six inch purlin I got. You think we need to switch some? Yeah, all of these. Look at them. Damn, I didn't think that would rot like that. Well, just think about years. And then there's no where the moisture to go. It just sits in that track. Mm-hmm. It's too south to just slap wood on top. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're already full send this. I'm not gonna change the perimeter, just these in the middle. The runners. Maybe we're just demoing the deck and then grandma don't have a deck no more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, grandma. Hey, the slab was poured in 97. 97? We got a little scratch right here. Yeah, so that's probably when all this was done. You Your shoelaces sucks. undone. Yeah. Do you want me to tie it for you? Nah, I get it. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. Come here. Come here, big boy. Let me tie it for you. <laughs> I got it. Make that's the... definitely coming to party. It is. I am freaking drenched. I am too. I'm taking a quick break. Do we have, we have waters in the ice chest, yeah. don't we? Let's take a break. I'm down. It's been an hour. It's been an hour. I'm almost done grinding. Yeah, I'm almost done with this dick. It's always good to be uh, well-rounded in the construction field. Mm -hmm. That way, if there, there are some things that happen, uh, at least for one, mm -hmm. you know what to do. And two, then you, if you need to, you could sub it out. Like my dad always told me, like I watched my dad work with my old man. We'd be out there to bid some windows. Right. He would do that. He would be like, well, what about this? What about that? And I, and the lady be like, yeah, I was thinking about doing that. So we we're picking up more work and then I get in the pickup with him. I'm like, dad, have you ever done that before? He's like, no, figure it out. And it always worked out. But nowadays we have YouTube. Yeah. Like, we Can do you these imagine? videos. We spend all this time doing these projects, teaching people. You can learn everything on YouTube. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. That I learned, I've learned a lot on right. YouTube. And we're out here bidding this concrete deck, concrete patio. We look at our wood deck that is in worse shape than the concrete. Right. I mean, I've never installed decking over purlins like that. It's pretty freaking cool. It's a smart yeah. idea. 26 cool. years old. That's not a bad for a deck. No, if you had, you know, pressure treated under there, this long rot. Right oh finish. yeah. I think it's held up its its lifetime. Mm -hmm. And the only downside was that channel at the bottom. Right. So like the ones we install, I like your idea of drilling some holes. Maybe pop some holes. Make it drain. It would make it last even longer. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do too many of those. No. Like maybe every few, yep. three foot. It would let it dry out yeah. way faster. Like you could just see the rust flakes from, all, from right. years, 26 from years. years. Concrete, depending on what region of the country you're in, is gonna be different levels of hardness. In Texas, it's more of a soft concrete. Out west, California, Oregon, Washington, it's a more hard to super hard concrete. Out in Florida, they're using seashells as your aggregate. So that takes your concrete and makes it even more soft. So really, you're gonna need to learn the concrete in your region. Depending on how hard or soft your concrete is, that's gonna tell you how much epoxy you're gonna need. The softer the concrete is, there's gonna be a little more absorbing in, a little more off-gassing happening. So in Texas, in Florida, instead of like three quarters of an ounce per square foot, walked it up to about an ounce per square foot when putting on that first moisture seal application. Dang it. We should have got a skeleton from the Halloween store and stuffed it under there. <laughs> so we start pulling up, it looked like there was a dead body under the deck. All right, I'm gonna get the big vacuum and get all this dust cleaned up. We're buying a skeleton and we're gonna put it under there. Yeah? And then put decks on it. <laughs> we'll put a cowboy hat on him and he's just like laying there. We'll put like dirt on him like he's just in the grave. <laughs> All right, guys. So we were talking that it would be funny if we could put a skeleton under the deck. I told the homeowner's daughter about it and they happen to have a skeleton in their storage that they could get rid of so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna put <laughs> frank you found the skeleton under the deck and see do you have an old cowboy hat i you, do just a little tiny cowboy hat 
Oh, oh, that's even better. Even better. <laughs> Frank is going to live under the deck <laughs> to take care of everybody. You're going to do donate to say, Frank, Frank to the deck? So Frank's going to work, huh? Yeah. It's perfect. It saves us a stop from going to the Halloween store. That wasn't that hard of work. I mean, it took an hour and a half to completely grind and clean this pretty much. So we'll give it one more cleaning. We've got a little bit of crack patching to do. We've got oftentimes when you use those 22 powered nails that go right into concrete, it'll blow out and fracture some concrete. So we have a little bit of that going on. We'll patch that with a crack patch, go get our material. We're coming back to do some flakes here in two shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> oh, that tasted straight up like pool water with a little bit of decomposing vinyl. Yeah. Keep that immune system up, man. I was raised on hose water. Ooh. Floor patch epoxy gel, one-to-one -one product. You just simply mix it right on the concrete till a uniform color is achieved. And then we're applying it in cracks right here. I almost fell off my little cart and I mm. gouged way deep. So I'm gonna fill up that little low spot and we have a little bit of blowout over here we need to fill. But this is the same material that we would use to fill up any small cracks and or expansion joints in that concrete slab to give you that uniform designer floor that everybody's seeking without any expansion joints. In the colder winter months, uh, don't leave this crack patch out in your shop, in your trailer. The colder it is, the harder it is to mix. Uh, set it up in front of a space heater, warm it up just a little bit. That's gonna help with mixing and applying it into your cracks. We've used these trails on many of floors already now. Yeah, we have. That's a cool part too and on the floor. If you're gonna go into business, do your first floor, learn this in your garage. You're gonna tool yourself up. A lot of those tools are gonna go to dozens of jobs. So you're gonna pay off your floor, all that startups cost. Just go install your neighbors winning the floor patch epoxy gel will dry for two to three hours before it's ready for the next step and what is the next step the Mitch? next step is applying the moisture seal epoxy primer and then throwing out flakes my favorite part we're gonna make it rain feeding them chickens feeding them We're getting all the supplies in. It's time to throw down the moisture seal primer and then broadcast some flakes. We're tying up any loose ends on the job. Kenny's gonna go attach some of the loose lattice. The floor is completely ground, cleaned. The hard work is in the tail lights. From here, it's nothing but a little bit of fun. So we're gonna mix up the moisture seal epoxy primer. That's a two to one ratio material, but that's our foundation. That penetrates in, gives us a really good bond, and that's what holds our epoxy flakes down. We're gonna let that cure overnight. We'll be back in the morning to scrape away any loose flake. We'll follow that with a poly a spark top coat and then this project will be complete it's gonna be a pretty gray huh isn't that pretty yeah scrape that for me i'm excited for this flake color so the battle plan bud is we'll mix yeah and then we're hitting the perimeter best case and what we've learned doing these together is yeah. there's no tape on the market that's going to keep epoxy from bleeding no right? and then if anything if you put the tape and then you get it, it underneath it there yeah, yeah, it's then, a false sense of security. Right. You're then you're tr grabbing your trowel, you're blobbing it all over that next to that tape, right. and then it's soaking up. Yeah. And now you're dealing with that issue later. Yeah. So, talking to pro, you know, talking to the real pros that do this. Yeah. As a full time day in job, day out. Just cut it in, man. It's gonna save you time. It's gonna save you all that prep time. Plus, right. It's kind of productive. So, I'll uh, throw in this B. Okay. You want to mix? Yeah, I'll mix. We'll cut in, then we'll spread the material out over the rest of the floor with that magic trowel, we'll back roll, then we're throwing flake. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Hopefully I mixed it good enough. Yeah, this stuff's easy to mix, it really is. You can mix this by hand, no problem. Yeah, That's how you're doing. very easy. You know, if you don't have a paddle mixer and a drill. You can do it manually. You can mix, mix it manually. Oh, like, Manuel. Like Manuel here, my amigo here. Rather than two minutes, extend that to about four minutes. I'll start working can your way, you start walking mine. 
Yeah. We meet in the middle between the old Georgia. Fine. Make a lot of ground because we both give a little. There ain't no, you know, floor too large if we meet in the middle. What do you think about that? <laughs> you didn't laugh at my song. So at this point, I'm just cutting in close to the wall. I get my brush saturated. I get it down, kind of give it a little shake shimmy. Ooh, a shake and a shimmy, Shake and a huh? shimmy, like you cut in paint. These are gonna be throw away brushes, guys. No real way to thoroughly clean these. So get the cheap ones. No need to get expensive brushes at this point. All right, guys, it's getting late. We're applying the moisture seal to this last section. We're gonna throw that flake, let it cure. We'll be back tomorrow. We're calling it a night, man. We put in some work. Yeah, we're back, man. Back again. We're back again. <laughs> Let's do it. So, when we first walked up, we threw this flake late in the process. I see some bare spots on the stem wall I threw. Your stem walls look fantastic, so you should have been the stem wall guy. <laughs> so the cool part about the flake is you could roll right, you know, we're well within the open window. So I'm gonna roll some more moisture right on over that. And then just flake, -flake it again. this section. And then I'm gonna scrape everything. What are you gonna do? So what I'm gonna do is since I got all the purlin out that needs to be replaced, mm -hmm. we got replacement purlin that we're gonna put back in, and then I'm gonna weld all that back up, and then we'll start on the deck. Yeah, everything yeah. should be good to go after that. Heck yeah, we'll get the poly put on the stem wall on the front and the steps, so that way we don't have to worry about any of it getting on this decking. Right. And when I'm done scraping and applying the poly spartic for that flake, I'll peel off and help you on that deck. Yeah, that, and then we can knock it out. Let's go, man. All right, let's do it. Our epoxy moisture seal primer is ready for the next step between eight and 12 hours. Here in Texas, it was about seven, it was the mid to low 70s last night. So this cured perfectly, no rain. We're good to go and we're well within the open recoat time. So if you're coming back to that project and it's been 24 hours, there's no need to sand before applying that top coat. If you let this flake sit for a couple days, I'm gonna scrape it off and then I'm gonna grab like a drywall sander and give it a quick little rough sanding with 220 to maybe 150 grit sandpaper clean that dust out, then you're ready for that polyspartic. And if you're in an outdoor space like this, you're not in a garage where you can bring the temps up, do not apply the Moisture Seal Epoxy Primer in temperatures below 60 degrees. All right, next step, we're getting a scraper. You can pick those up at your hardware store. Amazon has even wider ones to make this a very fast process. But real light pressure, I'm not digging, I'm just almost gliding across. No need for spike shoes till you mix up that polyaspartic to do your top coat. Uh, just don't wanna be tracking in a bunch of dirt and mud, so I'll brush mine off. And then I'm gonna start scraping this floor. The more time you take at this point to get the loose flakes, and then the more time we take to vacuum, to clean all these out, it really makes the next step applying that top coat really nice. The downside of keeping too much loose flake on the floor is as you roll the, the top coat, it builds up on the roller, it gets into your pan, and then if you're not careful, you'll leave little mountains of those flakes you're reincorporating into the polyaspartic. You come back the next day, be like, what is that? It looks beautiful, what's that? It's a little mountain of flake. So the cleaner you get it right now before applying the top coat, the better. All this fresh flake, Right away, this is all good to go for the next project. It's all the dry stuff sitting on top. I'll go right back into my box. It's always good to have a little hand tra a little hand scraper for steps, little edges like that. That big boy would be tough. Question of the day, we're about to start this deck. Let me know, do you wanna see from Stone Coat Epoxy other projects, other home improvement projects 
rather than epoxy, let us know in the comments below. I really want to know because I have a lot of fun doing other projects than epoxy. I got a whole bag of tricks to show y'all. So that's how fast I'm done. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these on the ground. That way the purlin's just not on the ground. It'll give it a better support and it'll keep that uh, center supported like they wanted to in the beginning. So we're just gonna keep it like that. inch whirlers do a really good job of cutting in it's better than the brush because i get a nice little mountain of resin i push pressure down and then i just walk that little puddle forward it's pushing it to the side it's coating in front of the roller and spreads it fast we got a lot of working time with the polyspartic though okay moment of truth Like it was meant for it. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. I love it. Seven hours later. Hit the perimeter, and then I kind of go in four or five foot sections at a time in a V pattern. Then I back roll, try to get it as even as possible. It gets tricky with the lighter colors on seeing where you've applied it. So guys, take your time here. Do not rush. And as you use these big rollers, when you get up close to the wall, slow down. They can fling uh, polyaspartic and a little flake up on the wall. So if I'm gonna roll towards a wall, I slow way down when I get close. I go right in the middle, and then I feather it a couple rows to the left, and then I come back into the middle and feather right. When I'm all done, I'll throw my spike shoes back on and then I'll cross hatch and I'll roll the other direction. I'm just looking for a nice uniform coating. Do not apply more than about one ounce per square foot per coating. Polyaspartic cures differently than epoxy does. Epoxy cures with heat, with an exothermic chemical reaction. Polyaspartic cures similar ways as paint. It needs air to dry. So a real thick coat of polyaspartic is counterproductive. It's gonna slow down the cure and it can create micro bubbles if you go too thick. I hate working with Mitch. Oh my God. He's uh, such a diva. Note for the uh, editor, remove Kenny out of all videos moving forward. You got the welding done. Yeah, it's done. We met nearly in the middle. You were done before me, but I got the, uh, the main project done up there, Kenny. So I'll, I'll jump right in this front. Yeah, and if then you was, can jump on that front, then I can start putting the deck. Yeah, the I got to jump on, on the stair actually first. Huh? I got to jump right here because then we're, we're starting here, moving over. Or well, we I was going to no. start here and work out, remember? And that way we have a way. straight board. We're nice and tight to that step. Yeah. That's a great call. All right, well, then I'm going to finish off the Whichever. stem wall and the perimeter. And then uh, the poly step is complete. That'll be dry in about 18 to 30 hours. Well, this heat, 18 hours. And we'll be ready for... Uh, Done. It could walk. You could drive on that if this was a garage in three days. But Grandma can pull her furniture back out there and enjoy the porch. Yeah. I'd say tomorrow afternoon. So the next step for me is wait on Mitch. <laughs> um, a dollar waiting on a dime. So the next step I got to do is once Mitch finishes with the stem wall, then we're gonna start cutting deck boards, and we're gonna start laying this deck out.
All right, I guess we'll square this up and then we'll start taking measurements. So it's real important on this very first board. That sets the tone for this entire project. And we've got a little thing we're, that we're gonna stay nice and tight with, which is our existing stairs. Those stairs are out of square with our deck. So we found the, you know, the best placement for that so it doesn't jump out as being way out of whack. We found the, the happy, happy, happy. Medium? Place. Happy, medium, happy place. Look at this, this deck is so strong now. All the room for activities up here. Snap! Breaks his leg. And then you could lean your shin into it. You use the square as a spacer and use the square as your, your uh, layout on the board. Got it. Yeah, dude, I think it looks good. Me too. All right, dude, I think that's a good place to stop. I agree. All right, dude, we made some great headway yesterday. Yeah, for we sure. Got the polyasmartic complete. That looks fantastic. Yeah. Grandma's already seen it. She loves it. Beautiful. The purlins you installed yesterday made this thing so solid. Yeah. Like you could have a party up on this bad boy. With elephants. Yes. With uh, or, or Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> so we ran into an issue yesterday where we there's a few purlins we couldn't switch because how they're attached. Yeah, because the they're attached with uh, uh, nails. Yeah, they're bolted in. Plus, they weren't rotted, so why yeah. change those? But yeah. we had issues with those screws on top. So you had a great idea of welding a brand new piece of steel, but that gave us troubles with our yeah. self-tappers. So we grabbed some drill bits. That solved the issue. Let's finish off tagging this and then just work our way backwards. Right. And then uh, we have a mystery guest to to take care of earlier. Yep. Where are we gonna put him? I say we could just stick him right here on the side All here. All right. So we have Frank. We have Frank. Frank the Tank. Uh, this deck was about 30 years old when we replaced it. So we're gonna take Frank, we're gonna put him under the deck. He's gonna live here. <laughs> and then when they go to change this deck, whoever does. Later. Like 30 years from now, it's gonna be a, a very fun surprise when Frank's, I just only, guys, I Press wish we like could be button. here. What would you do? Would you put Frank under the deck yeah. Since for the next guy? Question of the day. And if you crush the like button, we will come back when they tear this up and show you that footage. Yeah. In 35 years. Yes. <laughs> Grandma, you... hopefully he's still here. Yes. Frank. Frank, you like it? Yes. Totally. It's, love... it's a great idea. I really don't like this little thing here, though. It's a bolo. A <laughs> bolo. <laughs> It's, it's a Western theme, Bolo. <laughs> we should give him a stone coat shirt, bro. All right. No, that's a good hat. Rest in peace. Rest in pieces, Frank. But then like, they're gonna dig it up. If grandma's still here, which I hope she is. Yeah. They're gonna think this is her husband. It might be. They're gonna, they're gonna investigate her as a black widow. <laughs> <laughs> should we sign it? Yes. <laughs> All right, let's sign his head. All right, Pete, buddy. Maybe we should put the date here, too. Frank was a good skeleton back in the day. He did his job. He was always there to scare somebody when you needed somebody to scare. But then he's laying to rest to take care of the deck and may he rest in peace. Let's go to work. <laughs> <laughs>
some of your favorite artists to listen to on the job side? Oh man, I listen to a pretty wide variety of music. Right now I got Snoop Dogg, but Beastie Boys, I mean, I'm from, I graduated in 2001, so I like gangster rap, country, whatever it is. What about you, Kenny? I listen to it all. Actually, right now I'm listening to Limp Biscuit Station. So, little Cypress Hill right now going on. Good vibe. We just having fun. We don't care who sees. Framing Square. Get it for decking. We've got our screw spread marks right on our square. We'll use it as a spacer, then we know exactly where to do our screws. It also lines them up so when you look at those screws, it is money. Bro, it's the eclipses. Oh, is that what's happening? It is. I was wondering why it was getting dark. There's no clouds, it's the moon. You don't have to yell. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's like uh, darkening quicker as we stand here too. Or is it just me? We should go take some headshots. <laughs> should right. we, Mitch? Be perfect. Mmm, that's sexy, right? I can feel the sexiness mm -hmm. on that one. Wait, why not? This is why Rhonda don't want to be on the job site with us. <laughs> it's like it's bright, but it's not bright. It's weird, huh? Whoa, look at this, Kenny. I would like to do epoxy work every time there's an eclipse. Oh! Yeah, dog! What is happening? What it's the, the heck? It's the ND filter, bro. Look at that, it looks like glass. Dude, we're tripping. Let's go buy Texas solar eclipse shirts on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> We surprised Grandma with this one. Yeah, she didn't this, know. We she were didn't know that deck, she was really going to get this beautiful deck that we're doing. This was more important than the patio, in my opinion. Yeah, for locked. sure. You couldn't even walk. I mean, anybody walking on it was uh, it was kind of like walking in a minefield because <laughs> you were you were not going to know if you were going to make it through <laughs> no. the boards. I know because I stepped over a rotted board and then that one was just yeah. as bad. It just didn't wasn't rotted enough. Yeah. And she was so excited talking about the little party she's going to have. Oh, I know. All her old she's going to have all her girlfriends all her old over. Gals come over. Yeah, they're gonna enjoy the day. That's epic. And that, and what was cool is like she told us this morning, she kind of got bummed out coming outside because the deck was bad. She couldn't mm -hmm. walk she out, come here. out here. It was real dingy and dark in there. And yep. she just kind of lost interest. And now she mm -hmm. has interest to come back outside. And that's, that's awesome. kind of a cool feeling, It huh? really was, it made my day. And that's really why I wanted to do this and help a gal like that out, man. Because yeah. you could tell she didn't have the. I mean, she's an old. She's 89 years old. Her husband died in 2014, so she's probably just been on Social Security the whole yeah. rest of that life. So, she's it's a good thing it. to help. Yeah. But after we welded those in, slept in these boards. The layout's the most kind of the, that first board's the most important part. We did some measuring, made sure we were as square that, that as square we as could possible. Be, right. This isn't square. Right. Um, so we did, and it looks good against those steps. And yeah. that's, you know, that's what you want to pay attention to. If you can't go perfectly square, just get her to look as good as possible, All right? Yeah, I would uh, just try to get in between mm -hmm. the two Split the, difference. the two spots that are, you that's know, what we did. which way it's crooked. Yep. And then from there, we're kind of just jamming away. Cutting the boards. And Those framing oh. squares give us our spacing. We just line up with the row ahead of us and work our way down. The lines look pretty good. And then the railing is gonna be kind of a piece of cake, really. Yeah, it's not gonna be much. I guess we figure out spacing on those when we measure it. Yeah, once we get the measurement, then we can we figure divide out the spacing it up and, and then, mm -hmm. I'm not good with math. I'm glad That's there's Google. Thank God for Google. Yes, my math teacher taught, uh, made fun of me as a child. He's like, what are you gonna do, Mitch? Walk around all day with a calculator in your pocket? Yeah. And then we do now. <laughs> I should have invented the iPhone at that point. Mm. Missed but you couldn't even do that math, so no, you were I can't out do. Of I, luck. <laughs> I couldn't do seven you times three. How can I invent an iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, so we'll rethink that idea. I'll just stick to saving um, DIYers money. money on home improvement projects. There you go. And to support the channel, share the video. That helps us grow. How about you? Yes, please like and subscribe. I don't want to work anymore. Does that only mean we have one more board left? That's it. Ooh la la. Tight. It's perfect. Ay! Yay! That's epic. Look at all the room for activities here. I just love it. It's so bouncy. Like, bam! 
Bam! Ta-da! <laughs> I love the satisfaction I get after a hard day's work working on a beautiful deck with my homie Kenny. Went through that four by four like butter. No, no. it's just not enough. Okay. So what we got going on is uh, we have a steel structure below our wood deck. So when you do, when you're welding steel, you got a little high point. So this board is a little bit out of level. So we're kind of giving our bottom of our four x four a little angle cut. So it stays nice and true. And this is the first spot of our rail. So you want to start off true. You want to be plumb and level. Yeah, that looks a lot better, buddy. Bingo. Bam. Dink, dink. guys we're finishing up uh, a few more pickets we got to get out of here we got places to be so we'll see you tomorrow bye how you doing do you want to come see the deck it's yeah. almost done yes it's beautiful appreciate it yeah so basically much. everything really, really, really. it's our pleasure to help really you do. all yeah. right guys it's the final day we're back Kenny beat us to the job with a couple special extra helpers and jammed out the rest of this railing. I'm gonna start cleaning up. I'm vacuuming up all these loose flakes that got a little out of control when we were throwing it on that wall. Proper prep would have saved a little cleanup time. So uh, in this instance, I could have put some plastic or some ram board tucked in tight, but we got a lot of landscaping. So you don't wanna go and destroy grandma's plants. So just work around that as best you can. That is why I raked all the rocks away from there in case any runoff got down there, got under the dirt. I'm breaking that up with my rake and my shovel and then I'll push all that fresh rock back after vacuuming up most of that flake and this job will be complete. Well, we're cutting the cap rail for the, uh, for the railing, making it look nice. So that'll be the final touch. We'll be done. Super big surprise this morning when we showed up to the job site and JD from Texas Best Countertops and Jeff from Artist Till Death came here with Kenny and helped us install <laughs> this beautiful railing. I could have slept way in. Dude. <laughs> Muy bien. Muy bien. <laughs> I'm so happy with this, dude. Me too. It looks fa fabulous. She's so appreciative. She's over there almost crying, making me almost cry. And she don't even know she's getting it for free. Yeah. What a great Sunday, huh? The beauty of this is that she can come out and enjoy it yeah, again. Dude. Let's bring her chairs back here before yeah. we clean up. All them boards, we'll cut some for that. Yeah, and we'll fix them yep oh thank you for doing this this is perfect is that cool so i put 15 for that and i put three thousand for the deck is that about right mm -hmm. well we're all done 
Oh, it's beautiful. You like it? Yes, I do. Look at that. Yeah, it's nice and grippy too, so yeah, you won't be slipping in here. All of that. So pretty. I had seen it before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked my brother about it, and he said it's a wonderful product. So I talked to you about it, and you came and you looked at it. And this young man came, and he, he's been a blessing to me <laughs> in this one. I want you to know. But if anybody is considering doing anything, I recommend this. Oh, I great. truly, All truly right. do. Well, what do you and, think about your deck? And my deck is fantastic. <laughs> they just, I was amazed in the beginning because they just tore it out. Yeah, we I didn't thought, give you a choice, huh? Oh, no. You know, I thought, <laughs> we didn't even I talk to you about I that deck, did we? I was going to put more to one that was so rotten. But they just tore the whole thing out, put new, and it is amazing to me, and I feel very blessed. Aww. And I want God to bless y'all too. We put the bill together, yep. and I think we came in a little under budget. We did, you. yeah. Yeah. So that's your flake floor there. There's your deck cost, and okay. you've already paid the bill. No. Yeah. Sure did. I. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. No, I... No, we got you. Oh. Oh, God. You buy some nice presents for the grandchildren. <laughs> I don't know what to say. No. I really I'm don't. happy to help you, ma'am. I, I can't believe this. Yeah, that's true. I'm truly blessed. You are. I'm yep. truly blessed. It's Thank our you. pleasure. These guys... Yeah, worked hard for you. We yes, had a good did. time doing it too. We yes. did. I thought you were just going to do this for it. Then I saw the steps. Then I looked and he's done it on each side <laughs> and down the thing. I was amazed because whoever <laughs> painted this before didn't bother to paint the sides. <laughs> yeah. That'll come out on this. Uh, all be all video, yeah? Yes, this yes. is all going to be on yep. the video. We even oh. had a funeral service for the skeleton and I oh, sang Amazing Grace. <laughs> Kenny was the reverend and said his said final words. Said a few words for old Frankie, but. I'm telling you, these two together are trouble. Well, Kenny, job well done, buddy. Yes, sir, you too. I had a great time doing this with you. We bit off a little more than we could chew on this deck, but we saw the project through and this is why I'm so it, happy. It's, it makes me feel so much better uh, knowing that we were able to get the deck done for her she didn't even know that we were gonna do it. So yep. that was even the better part of it. Right. So guys, if you get anything from this video, I hope you enjoyed watching. We had a blast making it. Yeah. Go out and do something nice for your next door neighbor. I think the world needs a little bit more of that right now than it needs uh, buying some epoxy, but do that too. Buy some epoxy flake. <laughs> but on top of that, go help your neighbor out. Yeah. It pays dividends. Pay it, pay it forward. Pay How it about forward. that? Let us know before we leave in the comments below if you want to see more Kenny and Mitch duos, I do. I had a blast. And until next time, from Stone Coat Countertops and RK3 Designs, don't forget, you got, you got this. this. And we'll see you in the next video.